Yo, yo, yo. For anybody wondering, yes, I have seen the Taroni's Instagram video. My response will be out Sunday. Nothing more needs to be said. Thought I'd give you guys a little update video on the i8 as I haven't been very vocal on it on YouTube. Rest assured, work has been going on in the background, but it's been difficult and we've had a lot of problems. I'll cover it more in depth on Sunday's upload, which will be 24 hours with me. We've got car meets, we're going up to London, we're in the scrapyard, Polaris, motorbikes, you name it. That video is going to go off, mate. I'm telling you now. And I've also got my micro sorted for the off-roading video, which I'm gonna film next week as well, which should be lit too. Right, let's get in there and see the i8. And here we are. So the whole front end is gone right back into the carbon tub. And when I say it has been an absolute nightmare, there is no exaggeration. I will put a video up on the screen now of us having to cut the front end of the IA off because that is the only way you can remove the front subframe without damaging the carbon tub. So I'm gonna put a little video of that on now. Watch and cringe just as I did. But that is the only way you can do it, so we had to do it like that. I'll put longer video up on Sunday's upload because I'm doing 24 hours with me, which is gonna be a good video. So much plan for that. This car is fully prepped and ready for the new subframe to go on, but it's gonna take a little bit of time to get it off of the other car. We'll go around there in a minute because that's probably what Stuart's working on now to strip that off. I'll put the plans on screen now of how you're supposed to remove the subframe. It was all in one piece and you have to cut the supports here. You have to grind it off along the back here and then there was three bolts connecting it on one two three which were filled with mastic and you can actually see the mastic here is so thick he tried to use some cheese wire and just cut it down and get it off but it was just never ever ever gonna work we actually went down to kent smart repairs where i get all my cars painted he has like um what are they called they're, they're like plans basically to get to see how you strip a car so for for like paint shops they use it so but when they're stripping cars to paint, they can see the plans and see how it's done correctly. They actually sent them over for the i8 and the only way to get the subframe off is to cut it off. This is probably the first time that somebody has ever changed the front subframe on a BMW i8 because I've looked online and I've found absolutely nothing to do with it on the web. As said by BMW, a one time thing. So they only ever should be one front subframe on an i8 and that's it. So this is uncharted waters for us and probably for anybody in the world. World's first Bosch, we got that on the YouTube channel. Pretty insane. So once we reconnect it, I'm going to do the full video on it. But just at this point, it's all a little bit messy and it's all a little bit frustrating. I'm busy as well. So I'm just letting Stuart crack on with it and trying to get as much done as possible at the moment. But we're gonna have to find a way to get all of this old mass off here because we need to put new mastic on when we realign it and put the sub front subframe back on together. It's a bit of a bad design really, I don't know where it all comes in one piece. In hindsight, I wish I'd never bought this car, it's been that difficult for me to repair. You win some, you lose some. But this is a great time to cut to today's video sponsor, Car Vertical. They may be able to help you not make the same mistake that I have with this car. Let's go. Car Vertical is currently working in over 20 different countries. It scans through online registries, old car vehicle auctions, salvage auctions, and loads of other places to give you the most detailed report on your car. If only I'd done a Car Vertical search on my BMW i8 before I'd bought it, I probably wouldn't have bought it. Here's how it works. I've just done a check on my BMW i8 and I can see that there's a mileage amber warning and an amber warning by accidents. Obviously we know the card's written off, but I didn't know there was a problem with the mileage. We're looking for green ticks. That means there's nothing wrong. As you scroll down, you can see information like if the plates have been changed on the car, MOT history and service history, etc. But let's scroll down to mileage to see what that's about. So it says here that the mileage has gone up and then down, then up, back down to 30 and then up to 60 again, which would indicate that maybe that they've been put in wrong on an MOT history or there is a discrepancy with the mileage. I need to check that one out. A lot of the searches even have pictures of the car's damage so you can see where it was damaged and what it looked like. Mad. Car Vertical is 100% 
a key part of buying any vehicle for me now in the future and it should be for you too so if you want to check your car your mate's car your dog's car or a car that you're going to buy then follow the link in the description and save yourself 10 percent off of your next report thanks cover for sponsoring today's video and also thank you for helping me make big decisions when buying salvage cars if only i'd have used you with the i8 damn right then let's go around and see Stuart and see what he's getting on with on the other i8 here he is right guys excuse the loud noise but we are now on the BMW i8 which we're using for the parts and Stuart is stripping this front end off at the moment you can see he's got some parts off already but all of this has to come off right back to here because this section the front subframe is all in one piece which runs all the way over there and we have to get it off of this car and put it onto the other car the only problem is this subframe shouldn't be taken off and put back on this is a one one time use part we are going to try and cut the carbon out around the back of it get the whole front subframe off and then peel the mastic off from the back as i've explained before we had to get the whole front end off on that one and we had to cut it because that's how the instructions say you have to get the subframe off so they're actually single use parts but we might be able to use it again providing we don't damage it when we're taking it off of this one but this is such a time consuming job and it's so difficult i think we're the first people in the world to change the front subframe on a bmw i8 the bmw i8 is still being worked on in the background but it's just such a such a difficult thing to do i wish i'd have got rid of it before i bought the second one because it is a nightmare but that's what life's about, eh? overcoming challenges and getting shit done. Right guys, just before we head back round to the scrapyard, I've got two cars for sale and that is the Mercedes and the Ford over there. So I'm just going to show you on camera what they are, the mileage, whether they start, what's wrong with them. You guys can give me some offers right in the comments below if you would be interested in purchasing it. So first of all, we have got a Mercedes, a Mercedes which is a K-Reg. What is the model? E 228. So it's a 228K Reggie Mercedes. W124. W124. It's done six. Does it run? Yes. It runs. I took the immobilizer off it, it runs. So it runs, it's done 60, it's done 60,000 miles. You can see in there, really clean and tidy. What it's needs what? doing to it? It just needs all the trim put back around the dash. So it needs all of the trim put back around the dash. Which is in the car. Which is some bits in the car. And, it, and just it. some tidying up a little just bit and clean. Up. So Look clean. That's for sale. Sixty thousand miles. K Reg, two twenty E Mercedes. Sixty thousand miles. Just needs a bit of a clean and the trim put back in the dash. And then over here we've got the full Sierra which Sapphire. Which Sierra. Is a Sierra Sapphire, which has been hit up the arse. You can see. So one down there. LX Auto. One point eight LX Auto. Other than the rear end problem, it's done. Does it run? Yes, it runs. It runs. And how many miles? Sixty thousand. So this one again, I don't know if you can see in there guys, has done 60,000 miles as well. Obviously it runs for drive. What's no the front end look like on this one? Yeah, the front end is got a broken headlight, look the grill broke. See, so you've got a front headlight smashed out, you've got two front headlights smashed out, yeah. broken front grill. I think the bonnet's okay. So that is, and the engine it's looks a 1 1.8. 1.8 in there. It it's okay, so it's a 1.8 Sierra Sapphire with front end rear end damage does start and run only 60,000 miles so if you're interested in either of these cars because i know a lot of you have been over the past with comments they are both for sale so that is the 220e mercedes k reg and the sierra sapphire g reg both for sale both 60,000 miles hit me up with some offers right now well, me and stuart were going to repair them and do a rebuild on the channel but other circumstances dictate that we have to sell them it is out of our control, so hopefully I can sell to one of you guys and you can send me the pictures of them once they're done because that would be fantastic. So yeah, if you want them, let me know. Obviously here we've got my Golf, which isn't for sale. I'm not actually doing any work on this because the man himself is occupied with the BMW i8 at the moment, so he's a little bit busy and he's a little bit bogged down with work. The roll cage has been ordered and this will be track car ready for the summer but the BMW 8 is priority at the moment and we're just trying to get that done out of our hair and then that can be sold and burned hopefully by somebody who buys it. Well, I'll be back around later, Stuart, yeah? Yeah, I've got my plan to finish it back anyway. 
All right, Christy, so we'll get back around the yard now. Yeah, so this weekend I've got another Empire car meet on Saturday night, but I'm going to go up to central London throughout the day. God, it's so busy, half of the estate shot, so everything's coming around in one direction. I'm going to go up to London in the day and go and try out a few restaurants and go to a few car spots to see what we can find. So if there's any places you guys would like to see me go or any restaurants you'd like to see me eat at and review, might do a little bit more food style stuff on the YouTube in the future vlogs because I love food, who doesn't? If there's anywhere you'd like me to eat, let me know and I'll go there and get some nice munch. People moan about this yard pulling in because it's tight. Get yourself a good lorry driver and you'll slide in there no problems. No dramas for a talented driver. Right, we're gonna go outside quickly. This is the area where we are gonna be doing the tug of war. So I'm gonna draw the line pretty much where this line is here. And we can film from back here. So my car's gonna be there. The Taroni car is going to be there. We're going to take the tension and we're probably going to go try and drag maybe 10 to 12 foot. Well, that nearly fell over. 10 to 12 foot each way. So we're going to clear all these cars away. We'll have plenty of visibility down here. The only problem is this wall might be in the way, but we'll put a camera over there. We'll put a camera down there. So we will be doing the tug of war here. I think the date we've got penciled in for the tug of war is on the 27th of February. So that is in about a month's time. So, yeah, but obviously my response is going to be out Sunday. Enough said. This area over here is pretty new on YouTube. This is our parts bay. So this is where we store engines that we're selling and other parts we're selling, like seats down here that you can see. Um, this is where we wrap them up to send. We've got all our top quality bubble wrap there all of our little drawers full of unique parts that are for sale on eBay. Look at that, this is our little picture bay here with the Ace Car Breakers logo behind. We are actually increasing all of this side of the business over this year, so be prepared to see changes on the website and changes on the YouTube channel and stuff to co incorporate all of this into it because this is big for the company. And this is the way the world's moving. Obviously we're going all electric cars soon, so people are gonna be clinging onto their old cars for as long as possible and are gonna be trying to save as much money by putting old parts, second-hand parts on their cars. So this is a big market that's gonna be very, very big for the next 20 years, second-hand car parts. You heard it here first. But to be fair, it's already massive now, but it's getting even bigger. The yard is so busy right now. It's a joke. We just can't keep on top of it this year. I bought, basically during Christmas holidays, I bought a go-kart. And my plan is to get the go-kart up the scrapyard and do timed laps in the scrapyard with some visitors. So I'm waiting at the moment to get a few people down to do the videos. But I need to clear the yard a little bit first because it'd be so dangerous. It's an electric go-kart. It's pretty sick. It's got like Lambo dials on it. I'll do a video on it. And I'm just going to go right round here all the way up the top of the yard, back down, round, and then use the way bridge as the finish line. It does 30 mile an hour, or fully electric go-kart, so it should be pretty decent. So that's the plan with that. We're gonna do that in the scrapyard. Might even get some of you guys down to uh, have a little go and see if you can beat my record time, but you probably won't, because I'm the bollocks at go-karting, just saying. And yeah, this was where we stored the Hot Wheels stuff. All the Hot Wheels is now gone and finished with. We're done with that this year. So this area here was actually used this year to shoot a fashion show for London Fashion Week and there it is a catwalk here. So this yard, if anybody's watching and they want to use it for filming or for music videos or for fashion week, whatever you want to do, let me know and we can arrange it because we can cater for you and it's a great location to get some cool shots, urban scrapyard, you know, it looks the bollocks. There's only a little scrapyard walk around today because I'm doing the 48 hours with Henry Arnold or 24 hours, whatever it's going to be and uh, we'll be out here tomorrow a bit more in depth, which should be good. That video's going live Sunday, so that's it for today, guys. It's your boy, HA. I will see you guys again on Sunday. Have a nice weekend, and uh, yeah, goodbye.